Carl? Get through a figure's about six days, hard driving. Where are you going with that wood? Well, Granny wants it on the truck. Put it down. With all the wood we got back at the cabin, we sure ain't gonna haul none from Beverly Hills. Oh, she says it's for on the way. On the way? <laughs> Granny, what in the world do you do? I'm making sure we don't freeze to death. What's going here? Won't be when we get in the mountains. <laughs> you figure to keep that thing burning for six days? It's six nights. Don't forget. It's December, every other place but here. Can't blame California. The weather's as mixed up as the people. I'll be glad when I get back where there's some snow and ice. I can't wait to see Ma and Jeffrey. Yeah, it'll be my fine Christmas present for your Ma and your sister, or us dropping in on them like this. Now tell me again, exactly what did Marie say? Christmas said the climate were loading their truck and appeared to be moving out. Why? What could have happened? Who offended them? Whoever it was, I'll have them driven out of Beverly Hills. Chief, Chief, don't get so upset. I know a man with $25 million in your bank is Is important. that why you think I'm upset? Because Jed Clampett has $25 million in my bank? Isn't it? Of course not. The thing that upsets me is the fact he might take it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whatever happened to the key to that door, but I reckon with our stuff out of there, ain't nothing left anybody want to take except some old pictures. Oh, Miss Hathaway says a couple of them pictures is Rembrandt. All right, after Christmas, we'll see he gets them back. <laughs> John! John! Where, where, where are you going? Going home. What? Oh, please, you can't go away and leave me like this. All right, climb on. I reckon we got room for you. Oh, my heavens, I caught you before you left. Granny, is there room for two back there? Yeah, if you want to squat next to the stove. <laughs> no, we don't want to go with you. We want you to stay here. We'll be back after Christmas. Well, Mr. Clamity, if, if you want to go home for Christmas, let me make the arrangements. I'll have you there tonight. Tonight? Clean back home? Yes, and you'll arrive in style, too. Well, Miss Hathaway, I think Granny and Ellie Mae should have mink coats for the trip, don't you? Oh, Oh. Well, let's go take care of it, and the reservations, too. Mr. Clampett, you start unloading the truck and leave everything to us. You'll be home in five or six hours on the jet. Oh. What's a jet, Paul? I don't know. A uh, bus or jitney, I reckon. Did you get us there tonight? You heard what he said. Well, that will be a surprise to Pearl. Uncle Jed, it took us six days to get out of here. How are we going to get back home in five or six hours? That bus driver must know a doozy of a shortcut. Pat, ah, have we got plenty of champagne and caviar? I guess so. Why? The entire first class section has been reserved for a family of VIPs. Clampett. Wow. <laughs> and ladies, I presume you've been advised of special arrangements for the Clampett family? Oh, oh yes, yes, indeed. You certainly have. Here they come now. Oh, get a load of those minks. Yeah. Granny, Ellie Mae, right this way. I'm sure you'll be quite comfortable in the lounge. But... Uh-oh. How did they get past the gate? Let's get them out of here before the Clampett see them. Uh, I'm afraid you're in the wrong section. May I see your tickets, please? Well, I don't think we got any. See, this bus sure is fancy. Bus? You've come to the wrong place. You want the bus station. Now, just go back the way you came and ask for the traveler's aid. Now, they'll help you. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Granny, Ellie Mae, come on. We're on the wrong bus. Mr. Clampett, what's the trouble? This is Mr. Clampett? Of course. What's the place? Step on. Here, Jethro. Keep the tickets. Now, Mr. Clampett, you have the money Mr. Drysdale gave you? Yes, ma'am. Right here. A limousine will meet you and take you to Pearl's house. And Mr. Drysdale is phoning ahead to Mr. Brewster to be sure your cabin is in order. Well, don't let him give away a surprise to Pearl. Oh, he won't. Well, happy landing. Merry Christmas. And au revoir. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you, too. And Jethro? Here's something for you if you promise to bring it back to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take good care of them. And remember, the tall, young, good looking one is mine. <laughs> Have 
your coat. My coat? Please. Well, it's brand spanking new. Oh, well, I'll take good care of it. Well, it's Christmas. I got my rheumatiz medicine to keep me warm. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you coat, please? Should I, Paul? Well, I reckon not. We don't mind sharing with folks, but when they get grabby and wanting everything, well, we just got to mule up and uh, say no. <laughs> if you can't afford to buy a coat of your own, here, you just peel off whatever you need. No, no, Mr. Clampett, you misunderstood. We just want to hang the coats up. We don't want you to give them to us. Oh, well, that's very neighborly of you. Thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> Now, if you'll all be seated over here until we get underway. Come on, let's go. Now, fasten your belt. Well, I ain't wearing one, ma'am. Just my gallus. <laughs> I meant your seatbelt. Well, doggy, this is a fancy bus. <laughs> Looks like the bus is commencing to pull out. Now we'll see if this bus driver knows an all-fire fancy shortcut. <laughs> That's you and me watch the road so we can remember it. Okay, yes, sir. <laughs> Me, this bus driver of ours is lost. Just keeps us circling and a turning. <laughs> I just noticed no shortcut yet. Yeah. Ding, ding. <laughs> Listen to him a racing that engine. Yeah, but the wheels must be spinning in the mud. We ain't moving. <laughs> Got her out of the mud. Yeah, we're moving now. Look at this split, too. My dog is, if he gets to going much faster, this thing's gonna leave the ground. <laughs> Tell that bus driver to slow down. He ain't got time for that. Let's get off of this thing before it gets any higher. <laughs> now, wasn't that a smooth takeoff? You may unfasten your seatbelts anytime you like. Would you folks like some champagne and caviar? Or would you prefer a nice hot meal? We have steak, chicken, fish, anything you like. Oh, no thanks. We had a mess of grits and jowls before we left home. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to relax then. Take a little nap. There. Whoop. <laughs> Doggy, Granny, ain't that something? It's good for my rheumatiz. <laughs> now, if there's anything else that we can do to make your trip more comfortable, just press the little button. And we'll be right here. And girls ain't a bit scared. They sure is friendly, too. Often to share their food with. Makes me feel ashamed we didn't let them keep our coat. <laughs> you want me to go up and talk to the bus driver, Uncle Jed? No, I reckon not, Jethro. Don't nobody else seem skittish, and we don't want folks to think this is our first bus ride. Jim. Yeah, Granny? It sure will be nice to see snow again, won't it? That's the truth. Christmas just don't seem like Christmas without it. And Pearl's house is all a special party in the snow. She sure is going to be surprised when we all come tromping in there tonight. Howdy, Pearl. How, Mary Winch? When are you going to learn not to walk into a body's house without a body inviting you? Well, I rang and you didn't come. You, you didn't give me time, you old coot. Now, don't you never do that again. Get out of my parlor. I like you when you're mad, Pearl. <laughs> you're an exciting woman. <laughs> Homer, you get out of here. I don't have time for your foolishness. Jeffreen and me is going to California to spend Christmas with Cousin James. 
Well, and I reckon you don't care to hear what I got to say. That's right. About Mr. Brewster. Mr. Brewster? Yeah, that tall, good-looking city fella who works for the oil company. Drives that big car. W what about him, Mr. Hinkle? I've been ordered from you, Paula Pearl. I think I'd best be going. Oh, hold on, hold on. I didn't mean it. Please, Homer, you tell me about Mr. Brewster, and I'll bake you a sweet potato pie. Well. And for dessert? Red horse swimming in elderberry wine. You're an exciting woman, Pearl. <laughs> well, you see, he stopped over at the Emporium to get some cheese and crackers. Said he was going to be over at Jed's cabin alone all day, and he didn't have no food. <gasps> Thank you, Homer. Please. Merry Christmas. Now, wait, wait, wait a minute, Pearl. You ain't going to do me out of my tater pie, are you? Well, of course not. You get it. Well, when? When? Well, I'll let you know. I'm busy right now. Bye. Homer. <laughs> Ding, dang, darn it. I've done it again. Let some pretty woman twist me around her finger. <laughs> I hate to go home. Mama's going to give me the ticket. <laughs> Ted. Hey, Granny. I just had a terrible thought. What's that? Suppose we get to Pearl's house and she ain't there. Where would she be? Out chasing that Brewster fellow, that's where. Ah, oh, she ain't likely to catch him in her horse and buggy. <laughs> oh, Betsy. Now, Betsy. I play my cards, right? You get to keep that bare blanket permanent. Because I'm going to have something else to keep me warm. A husband. <laughs> Ain't that a beautiful word, husband? Husband. And, and what's more, I'll be riding in that big, fancy automobile. So you can retire to pasture with that good-looking racehorse from Hot Springs. <laughs> I thought I heard a horse. Mrs. is Mosey. Well, won't you come in? Well, thank you. It's mighty cold today, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, it's nice to see you again. I, uh, I'm sorry it's so cold in here. Didn't bother to build a fire in the fireplace, and I'm afraid that kerosene stove doesn't put out much heat. Well, I can't stay but a minute. I just came by to give you this and say Merry Christmas. Well, thank you. Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, wait. Just something that I made myself. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Land to mercy. Look at this place. Why, you men just can't manage alone, can you? It takes a woman. <laughs> oh, please don't bother. I, I won't be here. You see, I'm going home to Tulsa for the holidays. I won't go no trouble. I'll just throw together a little snack, and while you're eating, I'll tidy up a bit. <laughs> is the most fantastic miracle I've ever seen. The way you produce this banquet right out of thin air. Ham, fried chicken, roast pork, and this delicious sweet potato pie. <laughs> That's my own special recipe. Oh. Here, I wash you down with some red horse and elderberry juice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that is sensational juice. But, Mrs. Bodine, I can say I, I just can't eat another bite. I... What, Mrs. Bodine, what have you done to this cabin? Oh, do you see a difference? And where did you get those curtains? I just run them up while he was eating. Really, you are a remarkable woman. You, you cook, sew, you're a wonderful housekeeper. And I love it. It ain't work to me at all. It's pure enjoyment. <laughs> Mrs. Bodine, I know that this must seem awfully sudden to you, and I, I know you have lots of ties and lots of activities here in the hills, but I was wondering, do you think you could possibly be happy living in a city like Tulsa? Tulsa? <laughs> That's 
where you live, ain't it? Yes, I have a very nice home there, but frankly, it needs you. And I think Mother will agree. You want me to meet your mom, Mother? Well, actually, it isn't necessary, and I know Mother will approve my choice. You don't have to give me your answer immediately. You just think it over. Yes, and... yes that's, that's my answer. Yes. <laughs> but we haven't even discussed money. I'll give you ever so darn much. So, Dean, as my housekeeper, I will be paying you. Housekeeper. That's Jerry for Mother. Oh, incidentally, Mother's just going to love this elderberry juice. <laughs> What's the matter? Did I do something? You sure did. You let me cook for you. You let me sew for you. And the ham. You let me house clean for you. Now then, I don't know what it takes to get engaged in Tulsa, but in these here hills, you've done enough to get yourself promised, hitched, and honeymoon. It's really, uh, uh, Mrs. Bodine, I didn't mean to. I'm going to Beverly Hills to spend Christmas with my cousin Jess. And when I tell him what you done, he ain't gonna take kindly to it. But, Mrs. Baldine, I give you my word that you I... You give me my hand, it sucks. <laughs> Your feet can't get no colder than they are right now. like babies. You think we should wait for the movie? I don't know. It's a lady super western, just the kind of thing they'd enjoy. Well, why don't we start it, and if they wake up, fine. Good idea. Chasing some fellas. They're shooting at us. Exciting, isn't it? Get down. You was right in the line of fire. What's going on? Whatever it is, I'm getting in on it. <laughs> but Mr. Drysdale, Pearl is on her way to California to see them. Well, can you catch her in time? Oh, I think so. She's driving a horse and buggy. I'll tell her her family's on the way. No, no, this is a surprise. Well, then what'll I say? But say anything to keep her there until the Clampets arrive. I'll get over to Pearl's. Oh, oh no, she, she might misconstrue. You see, uh, I have a very delicate situation here. Yes, you certainly have. And if you spoil Jed Clampett's Christmas surprise, he'll cut off your oil. <laughs> but, but Pearl might think I want to marry. Merry Christmas to you, too. Uh, <laughs> hello? Hello? Oh, boy. Here's the sweet potato pie and red horse, I promise. Hey, there's a piece of this pie missing. And a gulp for two of these red horse. Who got it, Pearl? None of your business. Now, get along. Jethreen and me is leaving for California. Yeah, I want a whole pie just like I was promised. Now you get out of here before I throw you out of here. Men is all alike. Gimme, gimme, gimme. You're an exciting woman, Pearl. <laughs> oh, don't even speak to me. There ain't a man alive. Worse the powder it'd take to blow him to you nowhere. 
man is just a bunch of low down, no good, Mr. Brewster. Claudine, I, I hope you're not angry at me any longer. Angry at you? Uh, don't be ridiculous. Oh, here, have, have, a, have some more sweet potato pie and some red hoss. Oh, this is a rascal who's been trying to steal my woman and my pie. I'm going to give you such a shoe. <laughs> Oh, I think I throwed my dang knee out. And I'm going to throw out the rest of you. Um, you see, in my business, I, uh... So what I mean to say is that I, I'm away from home a lot. And, uh, uh, well, I, I think that a husband should, uh, that is, uh, what, I, what I mean to say is that, in my opinion, I, could I have another slug of that elderberry juice? No, you cannot. Now then, I've been sitting here for three solid hours listening to you, and you have yet to say one word that a widow woman could get her teeth into. <laughs> Jacqueline, bring the suitcase. Oh, oh, please don't go. I ain't listening to one more word you got to say lest you say it on your knees. Don't come in here, Jacqueline. <laughs> don't say it. Please don't go. You are the slipperiest man that ever lived. Come on, Jacqueline. <laughs> Get out of my parlor and you stay out. You want me to throw him out, Ma? Begin <laughs> walk. Homer Winch, is that you again? No, Pearl, it's us. Merry Christmas, Jeffrey. Uncle Dad. Why, you have grown. <laughs> Mr. Brewster. What are you doing? Mr. Clampett, if you'd been just one second later, I'd have been engaged to your cousin Pearl. Pull <laughs> <laughs> back out of here. Pull back out of here. Please, Mr. Clampett. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow in one horse open sleigh. Or the fears we go. You're nothing but a two-timer, Homer Winch. Pearl told me about you sparking her, you old rascal, you. You're exciting when you're mad, Granny. <laughs> hey, how about going for a little sleigh ride with me? You promise to behave? Sure I do. Well, we might as well stay here and sing. <laughs> Wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you 